you actually wanted to get to know me. And you didn't treat me like I was your wife's kid. Jesus, this is deep. You treated me like I was your kid. So thank you. And I know I'm really grateful for you. Have a happy Father's Day. Love, Sierra. Wow, that is totally amazing. So now I'm gonna have to take this whole clip right here and send it to her just in case she didn't get a chance to view it live. But wow, thank you so much, Sierra. I'm telling you that touched me right there. It really did. I'm telling you, it is, that is, wow, so amazing, so thank you so much. I promised myself I wasn't going to cry today. I'm trying not to. <laughs> I'm trying not to. I'm going to get right down to this word. We want to share with you, yeah, and your family, family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in the streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives. you don't watch the whole entire life I wanted him to know that dad I love you That's right. and that uh, I'm not if I say what I want to say right now I'm going to mess it up at the end of my message but I had to let him know and say dad you have I mean like he's like the superhero of my life if you will I know there has been other people, other guys, other mentors and things of that nature who have come into my life and they have been spiritual fathers and spiritual things and spiritual mentors, but there's nobody like my father. Come on, come on. Come on. And I'm so proud of him. I told him this morning, I said, I'm so proud to be your son. I'm so proud to be a young. I'm so proud. And they say, that's truck son. That's heat son. He got so many different nicknames. <laughs> I'm happy to have my middle name as his first name. Yes. I'm telling you, so I just want to say, just in case you don't make it to the end, Dad, I told you that I was going to say something in service today so that you know that I am so super proud of you and that he has given me, he's shown me strength yes, he is. even in the time of loss. And showing me so much. He, he don't have to say much. That's right. But just a little bit that he shows me. Because a lot of people don't know. A lot of things are more caught than taught. You better preach. So yes, I just want to say that really quick. Listen. <clears throat> we continue the message on Built for This. Today's message is entitled, uh, well, Built for the Battle is the sermon series. But today I'm talking about uh, we're built for this. We're built for this. Amen. So, Father God, may you be glorified. May we be edified. May the devil be horrified. I need someone to put that in the chat and say, I am built for this. Yes. I'm built for this. Yes. I'm built for this. I'm built for the battle. I'm built for the war. I'm built for this situation right here. And so when I began to think about today's message... I began to think about the slogan or the, uh, began to think about the, the Ford. Their slogan was uh, built for tough. Built for tough. So, uh, and I looked it up. It said that built for tough was more than just a slogan. Built for tough is much more than just a slogan. It's three simple words that hold so much history and meaning. It represents the uh, decades of hard work, consistent determination to be the best and at the forefront, and ultimately it represents the American spirit. 
And so we as believers, as I began to think about that, I began to think about the fact that, you know, we are built for this. We need to understand that as believers, we are built for this. And so I want to change up the slogan just a little bit. Built for this. It's three simple words that hold so much history and meaning. It represents the years of sacrifice, holiness, and consistent pursuit to bring God glory from heaven to earth. To be the best soul winners, becoming forerunners, and ultimately ambassadors to the kingdom of God. And I'm going to say that one more time. And Minister Henry's going to put that in the chat box. It says, built for this. Because that's what we're built for. We're built for this. It's three, it's three simple words that hold so much history and meaning and represents the years of sacrifice, holiness, and constant pursuit to bring God's glory from heaven to earth to be the best soul winners, becoming forerunners, and ultimately ambassadors of the kingdom of God. So, again, three simple words that hold so much history. Let's talk about history for a little bit here. Why it is good to be, uh, to look back on the history. Uh, look, now, the, the songwriter says, as I look back over my life and I think things over, all of my good days, they outweigh my bad days. And so, um, I want you guys to think about the history of your life, how, you know, you suffered through a few things, that you went through a few things, that you uh, battled some things that was in your heart and your mind. Things will happen to you and you said that it wasn't fair. Yes. It shouldn't have happened to me. It shouldn't have happened to me. It should have never, you know, that, that person never should have said those things to me, though, that person should have never touched me in that kind of way. And so I'm here to tell you is that you have to look over your history. Joshua 4, 1 through 7, and the New Living Translation says, When all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Now choose 12 men, one from each tribe. Tell them, take 12 stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Carry them out and pile them up at the place where you will camp tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men and he had uh, chosen one of them of the tribe, one from each of the tribe of Judah of Israel. He told them, go into the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord your God. Each of you must pick up one stone and carry it on your shoulders. Twelve stones in all, one of each of the twelve tribes of Israel. We will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. And so on today, I want to just point out the fact is that you have to be able to look over your life and determine and see that you have been through some things. Why? Because God entrusts you of it. And so the children of Israel, that the story uh, continues with Joshua and Joshua basically they crossed the Jordan River. They crossed the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River on dry ground. And so with and, and but this time when they crossed the Jordan River on dry ground, uh, the God told them and instructed uh, Joshua to tell um, the children of Israel, uh, well, take one song. Take one song. So a lot of people think that these songs was part of something light, you know, something that, you know, you could just easily pick up. But the stones that they're talking about was something big and heavy. And they had to physically pick up the stones. And when they physically picked up the stones, they carried it over their backs and they had to cross 
the Jordan River. And so on today, I want to let you know that there has been some storms, there has been some things, there has been some circumstances that you have gone through, that you have been through, that you have been carrying. Come on. And so when you picked up that stone, when you picked up those things in your life, and you carry them from one place to another. You have to drag it just a little bit because it's like, oh, it hurts. And it, it, it seems like it's not going away. And it seems like, uh, and so uh, you finally get a chance to put it down and allow it to rest in the spot that God uh, told you to leave it at. So this is the reason why you have to release certain things over your life because that right there, you wasn't meant to carry all your life. You wasn't meant to carry the stones of rejection all your entire life. You wasn't meant to carry uh, the affliction, the hurt, the pain. You wasn't meant to carry those things all your life. And so God said it's time for you to drop those stones and then begin to walk away from those things that hurt you, from those things that oppressed you, from the things that you seem like you can never get delivered from. God is calling you today to release it now, but he don't want you to forget about it because he said once you drop those stones, you're going to be able to look back and be able to remember where God has brought you from. Yes. See, you was able to cross over on dry ground. You was able to cross over when, 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 when Moses and when Joshua, when they parked the Red Sea, the children, the children of Israel crossed over on dry ground. It wasn't wet. Yes. The Bible said it was dry ground. They crossed over on dry ground. So not only did uh, God uh, lift up the Jordan River, but he allowed to dry the spot from where they were walking on. And when he got to the other side, he said, put those stones down so you can look back and see where you have come from. Yes, come on. And so they, so they took these stones and they began to build them up. After brick, after brick, after brick. Large stones. And it said that, that, that they're going to be able to look back and, uh, ch and, and their, ch their children are going to say, what do those stones mean? What do those stones represent? And it's going to represent the deliverance that I came out of, the healing that I came out of, how, how, how our people have been set free from uh, Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been set free from Egypt. And so on today, I'm here to tell you that it's time for you to drop the heaviness, drop those burdens, yeah. drop that depression, drop those things that hurt you, drop those things that meant you no good. God don't want you carrying those things that meant you no good. That's it, that's it. So now you can go back and you can go look back over your life and think things over and say, all of my good days outweigh my bad days and I won't complain. These stones serve as a memory a memory of what God has done for you. Some people are left with battle scars. Come on. Some scars are physical. Yes. Some scars are emotional. Those battle scars, some of those scars will never, will never heal. They'll never go away. They're, they're going to be there to show you what you have come out of. You what, the, Some of those scars, when, when a person get cut in a certain area um, for surgery and things of that nature, they go back and say, well, let me see your scar. That's right. Let me see your scar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of those things, you, 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 you'll never totally heal from, but you don't have to live Come on. in that place. That's right. Know that God, that, that's a, a memorial to show you that God has taken care of you, that God has delivered you, that God is going to bring you out. You have to live with the fact that you have faced yeah. that thing. You faced it. Face it. 
You are built for this. And let me encourage you on today that these scars simply means that you're stronger than whatever tried to hurt you. Those scars represent every single thing that tried to come against you, tried to afflict you, tried to mold you to be something or somebody that you wasn't supposed to be. Let me encourage you today that those scars, whether they're physical, whether they're mentally, it, that simply means that you're stronger. And not only are you stronger than the thing that, that, that well, came to hurt you, but also you're, that you're a survivor. You got to realize that you are a survivor. Yes. You are a survivor. You survived the trauma. Yes. You survived the trauma. You survived the divorce. You survived the radiation. You survived the cancer. You survived the hurt, the hurt, the pain. You survived it. You got to be able to say, I a survivor. I won't stop. I won't give up. I am a survivor. I won't quit. I won't resign. I won't walk out. I don't care what happens to me. I don't know what's going on uh, in my future, but I know that I am a survivor. So I'm here to tell you today, and uh, don't stop. Don't quit. Don't resign. Don't walk out. Don't stop until God blesses you. Don't stop until you receive every single thing that God has stored up for you. Don't stop until you get your blessing. You got to become like Jacob and Jacob, he wrestled with the angel and he said, I'm not going to stop until you bless me. Bless me right now. Bless me indeed. Bless me right now. Don't stop and don't give in. Your current situation don't mean nothing. Stop looking at your current situation because God is saying that I'm right here on your side and you are a survivor. You were built for this. You were, you were anointed for this. You were appointed for this. You were built for the battle. And I'm here to tell you today, my brothers and my sisters, you can't stop right here because you are a survivor. You are a survivor. You are a survivor. Our slogan today, built for this, is three simple words that hold so much meaning. It's, it holds so much history and meaning. It represents the years Sacrifice. I know there, there has been some things that I have done in my life that I had to sacrifice for. There were some things I had to give up. Matter of fact, we were talking about that this morning, honey. That there are some things that we sacrificed together in order for us to be able to build a church, in order for us to build a community, for us to be able to build what we have right now, in order for us to move here to Orlando. We had to sacrifice. We have to say that the problem is that a lot of people don't want to sacrifice. They don't want to give up anything. They think that everything belongs to them. They think that uh, everything's supposed to just uh, come drop out of the sky just for them. Things just don't magically appear. Just to, I, I remember when I was younger, uh, I began to pray for this young man. He's very successful right now. And I prophesied to him that he was going to be able to travel the world. He's going to travel the world, um, not just the country. I ain't talking about the United States. He is a producer, and he travels with a lot of secular artists that you've heard of. You've probably heard him playing on so many different albums. And you don't even know who this young man is. I prayed and prophesied over him. But when he was younger, he, 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 he when he was younger, he needed some money. He was trying to go to the Gospel Music Workshop of America. Jesus. And so and he didn't have the money. His family didn't have the money. He had uh, two other brothers and some sisters that wanted to go as well. But you know, one of them had to, you know, uh, uh, just suffer. Just a little bit. The parents didn't have the money. So he said, well, he said, Mr. Shinaf, can you go to the ATM machine and pull out some money? Because he, 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 he's trying to say that, you know, God is going to allow the money, all this money, come out of the machine. I said, first of all, I said, that's illegal. I don't think God is going to do that. That's number one. Number two, uh, 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 money just don't drop out of the sky. <laughs> she had to hit me on that one. <laughs> Money just don't drop out of the sky. For the simple, you have to find witty ways and witty inventions on being able to work for certain things that you want out of your life. But I said, but you know what? 
You said that you prayed and you believe God, this go happen. Let's go to the exhibition, ATM machine. The disappointment in that young man's face when only my $20 bill came out of that ATM machine. <laughs> See, this is the reason why that you need spiritual parents, spiritual people, to let you know, nah, bro, that ain't right. That ain't real. That, that is not what God is saying. That's it, that's it. You have to have people in your life to be able to hold you accountable to know that, nah, that ain't right. So, on today, I, and I, I said all that story to say that the years of sacrifice, the years of holiness. We have to be holy because God is holy. The years of sacrifice, the years of hope, and we consistently pursuing to bring God's glory from heaven to earth. This is the reason why that we live sanctified lives. This is the reason why we live holy. This is the reason why we sacrifice years because we're trying to get the glory of God from heaven to earth. You want signs, miracles, and wonders to come about and happen. This is the way that we are built for this because we need God's glory to come from heaven to earth. And another way that we have to do, we have to be able to win souls. A lot of people don't want to win souls. They just want money. That's all they want. A lot of times, I'm not looking to get money, but I need the souls to be able to come into the kingdom of God. So we have to continue to ask God to bring us those souls. Hallelujah. So to be the best, uh, to be the best soul winners, becoming forerunners and ultimately ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Forerunners. Now let me just talk about this forerunners for a little bit because I touched on it. Just a teeny weeny mini little bit. Forerunners. What is a forerunner? Uh, the Webster Dictionary says that a forerunner is a person or a thing, but right now I'm just talking about a particular person that paved the way for success or accomplishment of another. Or forerunner. We're supposed to be forerunners. Yes. Uh, again, the definition is a person that paves the way for the success or accomplishment of another. You better come on now. We're from, I won't hear nobody preaching about this. <laughs> about being forerunners. Forerunners. Because it doesn't bring glory to me. Ooh, yes, come on, come on. I'm preparing a way for somebody else. It doesn't, yeah, that, <laughs> this is so crazy. You don't hear people preaching about this. You don't hear nobody talking about this. Being a forerunner. So when you look back over, you know, they talk about signs, miracles, and wonders. Yes. Talk about signs, miracles, and wonders. You talk about Smith Wigglesworth, who literally raised three people from the dead. You talk about a person like Amy McPherson, raised people from the dead. A supernatural miracle, signs, miracles, and wonders. Those people were forerunners. These are the people that you're trying to catch up with. They're forerunners. Yeah, come on. They're forerunners. They paved the way for the success. They paved the way. Oh, I wish I could go back into my notes and I talk about those different people, those different generals of the faith that came along and they they they, they did certain things throughout history that paved the way for the church. Wonder why people don't preach about it on no, um, being forerunners because it doesn't glorify them. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It gives somebody else room. Mm -hmm. It gives somebody else the attention. We are attention-seeking people. You better come on now. We want the attention. We want we we want people to be drawn to us. We, we don't want to be forerunners. We, we don't want to be forerunners. We don't want to be forerunners. And most people who are uh, who are forerunners uh, say, uh, because the reason why they, the people that are saying that they are forerunners, they want to be able to get the glory said, I did it first. 
I did it first, and you and you just trying to do the same thing that I've done. That's what they're looking to do. They, I, I'm a forerunner. I was wearing this first. I was wearing my hair like this first. I was doing this first, and they they see it on TV now. Now they wonder I was doing that first. If somebody preached about being a forerunner. is calling us to be forerunners, people. So John the Baptist, he was a forerunner. Come on, yes he was. He preached, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. John preached that message over and over and over and over again to the point that uh, uh, people started to hear about John. It was going to John. It was going to John to repent, be baptized. They heard John preaching and teaching. And then John saw Jesus. He showed up on the scene on the hill. And the forerunner turned around and looked and said, Behold! The Lamb was saying uh, before the world. Uh, this, he's going, he said, Behold! John 1 15, the New Living Translation. We just say what it says. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowd. This is the one I was talking about. When I said someone is coming after me that is far greater than I am, for he is this long before me. We got to be forerunners. We got to be that person to be able to say, hey, listen, there's somebody that's, that has been anointed and appointed before me, but now, now that I was on the scene first, I got to step to the side and allow that person to be able to take over because he's the one that we've been waiting for. I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that we are the forerunners. We have to be able to say that Christ is coming and Christ is king. And that it's not about us, but it's all about him. So you need to be able to let go of your pride and say, I am not the one. But there is somebody that's coming after me that is the one. And he's coming back and he's riding on I'm trying to preach. Yeah. Oh, Jesus said, I am a forerunner. So let me just say this. We as men, so let me go ahead and talk to the men now. Now, this is where I get my little, my little spot right here. Talk just a little bit. Happy Father's Day, fathers. We God bless you. But we as men, we have to become forerunners for this generation. We have to be able to set things up for our future generation. We have to be able to say, hey, listen, I'm here as a spiritual father, a spiritual representative in the kingdom. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 4.15. The King James Version says, for though ye have thousands of instructors in Christ. Yet, we don't have many fathers. Yes, come on. We don't have too many spiritual fathers. We don't have too many natural fathers. Let alone spiritual fathers. And so, I want to discover, for those of you who don't know, that I was a foster father and adoptive father, for over five years. Now come to find out that it's hard for us men out here, it's hard to be able to be a good representative of the male species, if you will. It's a little rough, it's a little difficult because especially being a black male growing up and really trying to do the right thing, it's so much stuff out there that influences us, that attracts us, that can, you know, uh, allow us to turn to a whole nother different life that we shouldn't even go and be in. There's drugs and there's alcohol and there's pornography and all kind of addictions. But like my wife said earlier today is that us as men, what do we do? We, we bring identity to a generation. We bring identity to people. We bring identity to. So this is the reason why I 
I feel that I am very confident in the person I am because, yes, I have my father in my home. I'm not saying that he did everything perfect, but he was still in my home. He was there to correct me when I needed to be corrected. He was there to encourage me when I needed encouragement. And you know what else that I come to discover? My father, even though I had other spiritual people in my life, I had other spiritual leaders. You know, we talk about uh, Pastor Gates. People know that Pastor Gates was just, just as much as a father figure as my real father was. But my father wasn't intimidated. No, he was not. Come on. He was not intimidated and knew that I spent time with Pastor Gates. He wasn't intimidated. That's it. He, you, you know what else? <laughs> so I do this, this lesson. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but it's all right. Since I'm going this direction. How I learned something. I, I went to what is called an encounter. And one of the things that they taught about in the encounter is this, is that how you view your earthly father is how you view your heavenly father. Come on, that's powerful. And so I began to think about, wow, my, my earthly father. So they had us write down, how do you view your own natural father? So we run into a problem here with a lot of people. Why? Because they don't know their father. Or the person who uh, it was in a representation of their father was always in and out. Whether that was a cousin, an uncle, or a brother, whatever the case may be, they were always an in and out situation. Or their mother was always in a relationship that was always in and out. And so because you have that, you, you've seen that in your life. Yes. Now you believe that God the Father is an in and out kind of person. Oh my God. Some people were hurt and abused by their natural father. And so this is the reason why a lot of times today you they, we have a lot of people uh, believe that the heavenly father is just ready to hurt them yeah. and abuse them. God is this, this dude way up in the clouds Way up in the sky somewhere, just ready to strike down the hammer. Yes, sir. And in everybody's life, that is not the God that we serve. Come on, teach, teach. You, we serve a loving God. We serve a gentleman God. But you haven't had nobody in your life that's been a gentleman. You haven't had nobody in your life that was able to take up the time to say, hey, son, hey, daughter. Let me come sit and chat with you a little bit. You didn't have nobody in your life to be able to say, hey, let's go out fishing. Let me teach you how to change uh, uh, brakes on a car. Let me show you how you didn't have nobody like that. Let me show you how to play the keyboard, the organ, uh, the drums, whatever the case may be. You didn't have nobody in your life like that. So because you never had a spiritual person or a natural person here in your life that you say that's the same way God is, he's going to do nothing but walk out on me. He ain't gonna do nothing but abuse me. Yes, and as soon as I do something wrong, he just gonna hit me. Or I'm gonna be a disappointment to my father. I don't wanna be a disappointment. So I gotta to try to be perfect. I gotta live this life perfect. I gotta make sure that I don't say anything wrong, I don't do anything wrong, because my, my earthly father expects for me to do everything right, line upon life, precept upon precept, and everything else. And if I did something wrong, he'd walk out on me, he'd beat me, he'd abuse me, he'd tell me I'm nobody, I'm no good. And that and that's how you view your heavenly father. You think God is up there in the sky waiting for you to mess up, waiting for you to slip up, and that's not the God that we serve. And then we turn around and heartaches and pain, and, and, and then you get sickness that's in your body. And you say, this must be the consequences of because I didn't love God, and I didn't love my father enough, I didn't love God enough, I didn't do everything perfect. No, baby. Woo, that's 
not the reason why sickness has come upon you. That's not the reason. The reason why you have sickness that has come upon your body because God said, I can trust you with it. Because God said that you was built for this. That you was built to be able to handle the sickness. That you were built to be able to handle the abuse. That you were built Your natural father. Then we tell people, go find yourself spiritual parents. These are supposed to be spiritual people to be able to help you in your spiritual life. And the spiritual parents turn around, they misuse you. They abuse you. They don't want nothing but money from you. And so the only way that you can receive love is that if you give them a ton of money. And so now people don't want to come to church because you think that you have to give a ton of money for God to love you. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. Or you got the spiritual parents that want that think that you're actually their child. Woo! Come on! That, 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 you're, that, that, that you're actually their child. No, honey, I'm not, I'm not your child. I just need some spiritual direction, some spiritual counseling. I just need that that's all I need from you. I'm not trying to live with you. I don't want your money. I don't need anything else. Only thing I need for you to do is pray for me. To be able to say, son, okay, that you were on the right path. No, I don't think you may not be going on the right path. Somewhere. You may want to think about that, son, just a little bit. Okay, well, you know what? Let's stand in prayer with you on that. If you believe that that's the direction that God wants you to go in, then okay, well, let's continue to pray. But, you know, that's what spiritual parents I'm supposed to do so now. We got these spiritual parents that uh, if you don't do exactly what I say to do, then you're in rebellion. That is, that, that, that's control. I'm not looking to be control. I'm a full grown man. You a full grown woman, honey? Okay, give me high five on that, okay? <laughs> I done lived this life. I done been there. Now, I don't want to dwell on that too much. We, how you view your earthly That's it, how father yes. is how you view your heavenly father. So I wrote down on the paper, how do I view my father? Come on, teach, teach, teach. I said, well, I said, I know that he loves me. At the time, you know, I never, never really heard my dad say he loves me all that much. But I knew that he loved me. I knew that he loved me. I knew that he was a provider. So I'm like, God, yeah, he provides for me. I know that God loves me. I know that God is a provider. He's provided for me. Anytime I ask him for something, if it's within my father's power to do it, he'll do it. So I said, okay, well, God the Father, if there's something that's within his power or when he sees that I'm eligible, to be able to have it, he'll give it to me. That's right, that's right. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, kids, they want some things that's outside of their age range. Ooh. So when you go buy your child a pack, a, a toy, or see a toy, or you see a game, it says, for 13 years and over. Come on, come on. So a lot of times, us as kids, we want the 13 years and older yeah, 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 yeah. gift. Yeah. We want that. It's not time for you That's right. it's not the to time. have that gift. You're only nine, but I can handle it. No. <laughs> You're eligible for it, but it's not time yet. That's it. You may be mentally in your mind, you can handle it, but no, it's not that time yet. Yes, it. And so I learned something, and I'm learning something about my father. Now, I always, I always knew that he was a strong person. I never thought that he was a weak kind of person. But after uh, my mother passed away, a lot of times when I cry, a lot of times I'm thinking like, man, my dad, Come on. he been with this woman for the past, I'm, I'm 43, yeah. cool. about to be 44. They've been together 
for 45, 46, 47 years. They've been married. They've been married 45, 46 years this year. Yeah. I just, I, I said, I sometimes I, I weep and cry for my own father. I'm like, what is this man? How does he go? Man, man that's, that's rough. I mean, because that, they, they were best friends. They were, they were best, they, they've been together for years. And so I pick up the phone, I call my dad, and he has the joy of the Lord. Yes, he does. That, you know, and like he said, he said, hey, listen, I have my days, but he said, I believe Shirley don't want me to be in no sad and depressed state, so I'm going to keep moving on. And so, and I thank God for my brother and his girlfriend. That's right. I pray and prophesy they're going to get married. <laughs> They, they, they good for each other. They meant for each other. Yes, yes. We have to be role models yes. to those people. We're, we're, not, we're not supposed to be perfect because nobody's perfect that's except right. Jesus. Come on. That's the only person that's perfect. But we're supposed to be the best spiritual fathers, the best spiritual beings. People, people should look up to us as men like, wow, that's an example. That's it. Study shows this. A positive male role model for their children and uh, uh, for children um, help to promote, help to reinforce good behaviors. Yes. Wow. Wonder why your kids so bad you ain't got to see what male figure they look it up to. As a result, children with more involved fathers, so I'll say father figures in their home, tend to have fewer behavior problems and impulse control problems, longer attention spans, and a higher level of sociability. They have increased intelligence. They have a boost of confidence. They, they have someone to look up to. Children have, honestly, I'm saying children, but honestly, we got to have, adults need to have people to look up to. You're not idolizing them, but there's somebody who you look up, look up to. That's the reason why a lot of us, we look for spiritual parents or spiritual brothers and sisters and things of that nature because why? There's someone who we look up to. These children also intend to be more compassionate. And yeah, this is why you're trying to be compassionate because they ain't got no good father figure in their life. Generous with an increased awareness of the needs uh, and, right, and the needs and rights of others. They, uh, men a good male role model, spiritual father, uh, things of that nature, uh, provide a different perspective. Children are naturally full of questions. And a mother and a father's approach to those questions, they approach those questions differently. So active parents with different approaches in parenting can be a great way to expose children to a broader range of thinking and problem solving. Yes. The reason why you got to have both parents in their life, and I understand, listen, sometimes both parents can't be in their life, but again, like I said, I'm just expressing here, yes. a good role, a good male role model, a good male father figure. Active fathers have a unique opportunity to share their perspective on life and teach their children valuable life skills. I know that my father taught me some. That's right. Don't allow men to feel, now this is my own little side point right here. This ain't just what the study says. This is what I'm saying. Don't allow men to feel like they're less important or a secondary parent. here. Lastly here, my last little point here about fathers is that feel the love. They feel the love. Now this is the most obvious thing to say, but that doesn't make it any less important. Having an active father or father's figure, spiritual father or a role model, something like that, 
makes the child or make you feel loved. Having a dad is a, is a steady source of love and encouragement, help ensure that the child grows up happy and healthy with a high self-image uh, or self-esteem. Being an active father is one of the most important things you can do yes. in your life. Yes. My father was a forerunner. Uh -huh. He was a forerunner because he, 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 he didn't allow his former life, he didn't allow the former things that affected him affect his relationship with his children. Yes, come on. So on today, I'm here to encourage you on today that you have to be able to love your children. Love your wife. Love everything that you have going on in your life because you were built for this. You were built for the battle. You were built to be a father. Yeah. You were built because ultimately you want to become an ambassador of the kingdom of God. So on today, I'm here to encourage today my brothers and my sisters that you are built for this, that you're built for the battle, that you're built for every situation that you've come out of. I know that it may seem like that you were supposed to carry that burden, but you're not here to carry that burden no more. You're here to let go and let God. Oh, hallelujah, I need you to type into the comments right now to say let go and let God in the name of Jesus. And I want you guys today to be prepared to be able to be able to love on your father. Be able to love on that father figure. I need you today to be able to say, God, you are my father and there's no one like you. And I thank you, God, for being just a good, good father. Yes, you are. Thank you, God, for being great. Thank you, God, for being great in my life. Thank you, God, for there is none like you. Who is like the Lord? Nobody is like the Lord. Who is like you, oh God? I may not have my physical father here, but I thank you, Lord, that you are my father. Thank you, God, for being an awesome father. Thank you, God, that you never leave me or forsake me. For I've seen the righteous forsaken, nor can see them for bread. So, Father God, I thank you, God, for being a really good, good father. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. And I know that I was built for this. That I was built for the battle. That I was built for the war. And I thank you, God, for building me up and not tearing me down. Thank you, God, for doing great and mighty things for me, God. And Father God, I'm here to say that I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Bless me right now, God. Bless me indeed. Can you take me down to see? Hallelujah. <laughs> come on, come on, thank come you, on. Lord. I thank you, God, that you're doing it. And you're doing it for me right now, God, in the name of Jesus. There we go. Woo! Happy up too high there. <laughs> God, I thank you. I thank you, God, for giving me life, wealth, and strength, God. I thank you, God, for doing great things for me in my life, oh God. Thank you, God, that you have picked me up, oh God, and you let me turn me around. I shouldn't be here, and I shouldn't be in here right now, God. I should be on my way to hell, but I thank you, God, that I'm not on my way to hell. I'm on my way to heaven, God, and I thank you, Lord, for doing great and mighty things for me and the people. Thank you, God, that I was built for the battle, that I was built for the war. I was built for this. I was built to be talked about in high school. I was built for being bullied. I was built for being poor four hours. I was built for being jumped and my life been taken. So I can tell somebody, hey, listen, you better learn how to fight and know how to go out fighting. I'm here to tell you, devil, you may have thought that you have won the battle. Devil, you may have thought that you won the war. But I'm telling you right now that I was built for this. I was built for every scheme and circumstance that you thought. 
that I was gonna face in my life. Uh, you fucked uh, because I battled with low self-esteem. Uh, that I was gonna take myself out. Uh, that that depression uh, was gonna take me out. Uh, that that low self-esteem uh, was gonna take me out. Uh, that you thought that those suicidal thoughts uh, were gonna take me out. Uh, but Satan, uh, I'm here to tell you uh, that no weapon uh, that's formed against me uh, shall prosper. Uh, and every tongue uh, that rises up against me, uh, you said that you already condemned. Uh, so Father God, I thank you uh, for condemning, the, condemning those people uh, who thought that they had me, uh, that talked about me behind my back. Uh, I thank you, God, uh, that you said that the battle was not but it belongs to you. So Father God, I'm losing it right now. I'm let go of it right now. I'm not going to carry the heavy burden no more. I'm not going to carry the heavy stone no more. This battle don't belong to me. This battle belongs to you. I'm not carrying the hurt no more. I'm letting it go. I'm not carrying the pain no more. I'm not letting it go. I'm letting it go right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. From that surgery, God, I'm letting go. What I had to go through, I had to go through it because I was built for this. I was built for the battle. I was built for the war. And right now, because I'm encouraged today, because I'm built for this, it's knowing that I am built for this, I can climb over a troop and leap over a wall. David said, Yes, so I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, because God, you are with me. Now, right in my staff, it comforts me. So, Father God, anytime I feel like that I've been left alone, I'm going to pick up my word, and I'm going to read my word, and say, God, your rock in your staff, it comforts me. Even though the wicked and the enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a hope shall attack against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, in your word shall I be confident. One thing I desire of the Lord, and that what I see. That I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I need you to say I was built for this. I was built for this. Now I got the confidence. I was built for this. I can no longer live in shame. I can no longer live in doubt. I can no longer live in the person that I was before. Almost slipped, but I thank you, God, that you were there to catch me. Thank you, God, that you were there to enable me, God, to be able to fight my enemies, fight this depression, fight this loneliness. Thank you, God. I don't have the ability to be able to fight God. Fight, fight, fight. The ability to fight, 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 fight. I have the ability to fight. Hallelujah! The kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but the violence take it, take it, take it by force. I'm here to encourage you today, my brothers. I'm here to encourage you today, fathers. Take your love back. Take your joy back, take your mind back, take, take it back by force, hallelujah, do you want your love back, do you want your peace back, do you want your love, take me up on it, hallelujah, do you want it, yes I want it, I want it all back, Every situation, every circumstance, I 
the way that I used to preach before. I'm not going to preach the same way. You may have been looking at the old model, baby. You was probably looking at 1.0, but you're looking at 2.0 now. God had to take some old parts out of me and put some new parts in me. I'm built for this now. Sticks and stones, they break my bones, but words. Listen, you may have been able to talk to me in that old model, but this is a new model. Sticks and stones, they break my bones. But words will never hurt me You can talk about me You can drag my name through the mud You can say that Shannon's nobody You can say Shannon is a quitter You can say Shannon's doing too much You can say whatever you want to say But sticks and stones may break my bones But your words ain't gonna hurt me I'm gonna continue on Because I'm dead I'm built for this. I'm stronger. I'm wiser. Need a more shine. I buy my seat for the more seat.
progress. I'm here to tell you that you're built for this. Three simple words. Oh, so much hold so much history in me.
Father's Day, thank you so much. Um, this upcoming week, we have Prophetess, Nadisha Young, on Tuesday and Friday night. And I always post the link onto our Winter's Ministry page, but you can follow her right there on her page. Just look for Nadisha Young. She's definitely included in the link here. As well as on Wednesday nights, we do Empowerment Night. I don't like to call it a Bible study. Um, I mean, although it is Bible study, but it's Empowerment Night because we are empowering people through the Word of God. So that is right now on every Wednesday night at 10 o'clock p.m. And some of you may or may not know, I did start a new job. So um, we're going to continue Wednesday nights. July and then come August we'll take uh, a summer break and then when we take the summer break uh, we will start back in September after Labor Day on Monday nights because Monday nights is going to be my night off we'll do a little earlier probably about 7 o'clock or so Praise God. For those of you who are celebrating Juneteenth on today, or maybe tomorrow, let's go out and have fun. Make sure you guys uh, you know, be safe out there. Me and my wife, we need to go pray at the mall because you know, one of the things that my wife said is that you know the enemy, when he comes to attack, he tries to attack in places where people are gathered. And so then just be prayerful and watchful while you're gathering so that no hurt, harm, or danger. So, Father God, I pray, Lord, for those people who are going to be celebrating this upcoming few holidays for Juneteenth as well as Independence Day. And, Father God, that you will bless them and, that Father God, allow them to have fun as well as keep them covered and protected in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the word that has come forth today, God. Father God, I pray, Lord, that something that was said or done have blessed your people, God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, continue to bless our partners and friends of One Touch Ministries. Yes, bless the fathers and keep them covered throughout yes, this day, throughout this week, this month, this year. Yes, God. Jesus Christ, my name. When you feel like they're battling and going through in their mind, allow them to be able to hear prophetic voice says you were built for this Jesus Christ mighty name Amen Hallelujah we praise God for the word we praise God for the word as I was sitting there pastor you were speaking about being built for the battle and I, all I could hear was You can put 
Jesus. Yeah. Put the weight on me, Jesus. Because I feel for the battle. Put the weight on me, Jesus. I don't know about you. I want you to put the weight on me, Jesus. Because I'm built for the battle. I'm built for the battle. I said I built for the battle. Put the weight on me, Jesus. I have no more fear and no more doubt. Put the weight on me, Jesus. Yes, he cut the revolution. I'm built for the battle. Say it in the comments. I'm 